Hello and welcome to Character Design for Film and TV, 2D to 3D workflow. You're tuning in to us live if you're looking right here and if you're over here, you're also tuning in to us live just in a different capacity. Um, if you're in need of closed captionings, go ahead and head over to YouTube and Facebook. And before we get started, I'd love to take a second to thank Lenovo and AMD. Without them, we wouldn't be able to have amazing events like this. And if you're interested in other events that we have coming up, go ahead and check out all of our social media. You can even go to nomen.edu, and we have all the events there. Now, the only other thing before we get started is if you have questions we'll, for our presenter, at the end, we're going to have a Q&A. So you can put them in the chat. Even though we're here live on the stage, we're not going to forget about you at home. So make sure you put your questions in there, and we'll get them answered. Okay, I'm practicing the, these credits because tonight's guest, tonight's guest is a big one. Tonight's guest is a senior character and creature designer specializing in creatures, characters, armor, and costumes for the entertainment industry. Also recently a member of the Art Directors Guild, their, crediting, their credits include Men in Black International, It Chapter 2, Love and Monsters, Dark Phoenix, The Prey, you may be familiar with that. You may also be familiar with their Nomen Workshop, which by the way, if you're interested in checking that out, there's a discount code that you can use for this evening. If you're not familiar with any of that, maybe you're familiar with the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, which they were the lead character designer on, and they're also the lead character designer on the upcoming Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, nominated for not one, but two Best Creature Designer of the Year awards by the Concept Art Association. Please welcome Asan Big Lou. Thank you very much. Nice introduction. First of all, I have to thank uh, Nomen School of Visual Effects for having me here tonight. Uh, thanks for everyone here and also those who are watching this online, live stream. Uh, first, I'm gonna uh, show a demo here as a Nomen workshop that I did. Hello, everyone. My name is Ehsan Beglu. I'm a senior concept artist and visual IP developer in the entertainment industry. Thanks for watching this workshop. This workshop is called Making of Ahua Deep. This is a personal project that is revolving around an evil bipedal loop demon which has been gone through a lot of metamorphism over millennia and known to use his dark power to capture human essence and beliefs and use religion to torture them. This demon is against the joyfulness and literally anything human. Coming from the world Divis, which is Zoroastrian supernatural entity with evil characteristic gods that are descended or refused. I used and studied the ancient Persian mythology through the masterpiece epic poem book called Shahnameh, written by 10th century master poet and author Ferdowsi as my few references. In this workshop, I'm going to show you how I will start by generating my idea and drawing the character on a paper based on the brief story, mythological and allegorical story behind the character and always have in my mind the symbolism. This will go through the ZBrush to enhance the design in three-dimensional format and use Keisha to do quick mood lighting and bring the essence of character out. Finally, after the Keisha step, I will use Photoshop for comping and professional presentation. On my daily professional design work, either creature or character, I'm almost a start by sketching and love doing it on a traditional medium and transfer it to the CG, which is great. Sometimes it will suffice that I stay on a paper based on the client's and art director needs. I am confident to do so an entire design on a paper, but I like to explore. Also, at the end, there will be a bonus chapter to see the character in kind of the lighting set and the scene, which I won't spoil it now. Thanks again, and I hope you will enjoy it. Alright, great introduction. Awesome. For this one, I have to thank Alex, Linus, and Danny who helped me a lot. Uh, uh, doing this workshop. 
Again, yes, my name is Esan Biglu. I'm a senior concept artist in entertainment industry, mostly film and TV. I'm coming from a traditional art background. Uh, a lot of oil painting and drawing, clay sculpting, then turned to digital. I had done a little bit of practical effects uh, and been everywhere and started to learn everything. Uh, actually, I started with Norman Workshop, uh, which is very, very unique for me and it has a lineage of history for me. It's just like uh, I didn't have any access to any kind of school, so I started to learn from those early 2000 DVDs and uh, they were truly inspired me to uh, do my own stuff and a lot of hard working and doing my things and coming up with the idea. But a little bit uh, about the story uh, uh, and my journey is just like, um, uh, obviously like every one of us that you start to draw and you keep drawing and drawing and a lot of drawing. <laughs> Uh, I saw behind the scene of some of the uh, Rick Baker's special makeup effects in the 80s, uh, all those uh, metamorph uh, uh, faces in front of the camera without, there were no digital, and I just figured out I wanted to do that thing. I want to be monster maker and transforming that. So back then it was all special character effects uh, or special makeup effects, some call it. And, um, just wanted to do those things. Obviously, early 90s, it was a big revolution for digital, and I got uh, to play with just a little bit uh, Amigo 500 stuff, but nothing happened till uh, I figured out, uh, I, I started to do more uh, drawing and oil painting, then figured uh, I was introduced to Noman website early 2002, I guess it was 2001 or two, and. Uh, I wanted to be there, but I had, uh, it was just zero chance to be in Noman. So I started to look at those uh, Noman Workshop DVDs. I started to teach myself, but I was really, really into it. So worked passionately, worked my way up. Uh, then um, things happened like eight or nine years ago when I came to US and uh, did some freelance and I, ended up working for Ernst Sims Creative at Bear Bank and worked for there for more than five and a half, almost six years. Uh, brilliant, uh, great artists that I have worked with. I learned from all of them. Uh, and uh, working 22, more than 22 films and 12 TV shows. Uh, some of them that I can show here, some of them are still in clearance process, especially for film, it's a little bit tricky. and. Uh, then recently uh, uh, did a workshop for Noman that I somehow put stuff that I learned and I routine and what I do at my professional work day because I have my drawing board next to my digital station and always almost a start from sketching and then transfer those sketches to digital. It's just very important for me. Uh, I'm pretty sure you see the finished looking stuff here or characters, creatures, or whatever, or it's prosthetic design for, for example, Candyman. Uh, but it's, the reason is just I didn't get a chance to get a clearance for showing the sketches. Uh, and as a pre-production artist, uh, you do stuff uh, like the Tomorrow War creature very early on, almost very early on. I remember that day that we had a meeting with the director and writers, but they took the designs and they keep changing it and you will adapt with this process because it's very routine in a film industry. They keep changing the stuff. And sometimes things like the Archive 81, it ended up one-to-one -one on the picture, uh, uh, movie. Um, Three years ago, uh, back at ASC, uh, they started to do um, more Unreal Engine. Uh, it, uh, and Aaron told me that we're going to do the creature for the first time in Unreal. I mean, Unreal is very famous for environment and uh, not mostly creature, but uh, uh, it was a nice procedure. I mean, like, it's a, it's a good example that I can show here as a professional, it's just like a sketch, uh, Wolf Carpenter, so, and then transform uh, fully digital, and then it was just put into the engine. Uh, it's a part of the shot, the screenshot from the movie. I didn't put it a full film here. But if 
it's very, my, pr my process is very simple. I'm a concept artist. I'm not like very heavy software or production guy. I just use Photoshop, ZBrush, KeyShot for lighting. I know Maya because I started Maya way back in early 2000 from no one's workshop DVDs. So, uh, and I use it now. Actually, I got back to it again because I'm now doing more world building and I want to be like more art direction and stuff, bringing things into the Unreal. So, but yeah, all these things is even painted in a, f it's the texture was poly paint in the ZBrush because it's a technique that I learned with the real airbrush, uh, like uh, the practical effects. Um, I just went through all of this and to give you a nice uh, nightmare tonight and uh, scare you. Uh, but yeah, I will get back to these uh, first, uh, just like for example, um, maybe I can show a good one that here. This is a marker sketch, it's funny that it was Bird Box came out and it was pretty much close to be released, but uh, my supervisor asked me, they are looking for abstract creature shape, and back then, Annihilation was coming out as well, so it was a very popular trend. Trend is very famous in creature design world, but they wanted to play with the shapes, but at the same time, it was forming human and kind of a cloudy, dusty. I did all these um, fast things, and just like very abstract on market, and they just approved it. It still has a logo, uh, they sent it and said, can you develop this thing further? And I went to the ZBrush, I put it in the scene and like something this. They, they send us back the original cinematography plate of the film. And it was funny, we call it design or VFX design. Sometimes yeah, you can call it VFX design. It's that you do it on a plate. And it's funny because this is post-production. So I did these things in a ZBrush, did the lighting in KeyShot, bring it in Photoshop, and match it with the plate, which is very, very important, especially now even as an art director, you need to do these things a lot, this type of workflow. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was just a very kind of an example that I wanted to show. I like working on the plate directly, but you need to have a very good eye for lighting and compositing. By compositing means comping it in uh, Photoshop. Uh, I will get back to this uh, professional uh, commercial film stuff, but uh, maybe I can skip to the a little bit of personal sketches, uh, which are all drawing, honestly. Everything starts here. Like, um, I sketch, I love doing drawing. I'm um, anatomy, f I, I study, I've been studying anatomy for a long time. I st I'm still a student on that case. Uh, very, very dedicated to Renaissance figurative art. I studied that um, a lot and went to the uh, Florence uh, uh, School of Art and took some workshops. I did study the Titian to Brown School, Rembrandt Lighting, which helped me to bring that knowledge to the lighting in digital. And whatever I do in digital, honestly, it's just like uh, I have to uh, dedicate it to my background uh, traditional uh, art. Um, I'm not doing oil painting anymore. I've missed it. I, I love it. And these are the sketches that I did actually for Norman Workshop. Uh, it's it's the, the one, and I ended up one to one, something like that. Is there a reason that in, on my daily process, do you need to do these things to the fully? No, I just did it for the workshop. Sometimes it depends on the like clients. They can read this thing, and you're fine. Some clients can understand the sketches. Some people prefer finished looking um, uh, artwork. It all depends on your client and your meeting, which is, uh, as a pre-production artist, I have to say that. You go to the meeting and you sit down with the writers and directors or any clients. Sometimes this is just like a white canvas and they don't know what exactly they're gonna do and you're trying to help them to visualize their work. It's very important to communicate with them and having in mind that how you are going to build, let's say this creature down on track, if you're familiar with ZBrush workflow or any software, I'm not just saying just whatever you use, you know how it's going to be built. It's very important, it's a teamwork. You, get, you, you show your design, even rough sketch, we call it 3D maquette sketch in ZBrush, and you give it to asset artists, and they can do brilliant modeling based on that 
make it ready for riggers. Because some of my models, when you give it to character setup artists or technical directors, like they do rigging, they always complain. What is the hole in it? Or, ah, I don't know. But um, yeah, and um, there, there are some range in uh, some of them I selected here. I, it needs to be updated. Unfortunately, I, ha I don't have any world building stuff. I'm working on that. There are some architectural environments stuff that. Uh, um, I saw Alex doing some brilliant artwork for the last one, and I said, oh, I have to do something. So I'm, I'm, I'm into it. These are like personal digital work, like suits or a uh, combination of, uh, are, these are all ZBrush, KeyShot, Photoshop. Um, some make stuff, uh, even your make look <laughs> creature. But look at this. this. This make is just started there, rough, and you go there, maybe you can do somehow form painting in Photoshop for yourself and you play with the key shot. Why key shot? Because it reads your dynamish, holes, and whatever you have. So, and a lot of materials. But I do paint over a lot. I love painting on that. Um, I just wanted to show some of the uh, make design that look to me still creaturey. And custom stuff, uh, maybe. This is bizarre personal. This is a chimp gladiator. Uh, I like armor a lot. Um, when, unfortunately, like there was a great, well, it's such a brilliant project called Mouse Guard. It got canceled four years or five years ago. We, we, I brought in to work on this uh, project. It was uh, Fox and Disney, the same director, I guess, who's making a Plant of the Apes. And I was in charge of all these bad mice. We call them orcs of the mice. And uh, just keep Based on the comics, there were like a certain design and the other brilliant concept artists had already done some same language on this. It wasn't like I came up with all of this, not at all. I just developed them based on the original comics. But I just had an idea, what if these mice is like kill the bats and have those skull of the bats as a helmet? And it was back then, uh, because someone asked me, oh, these fairs are... Exchange in my said I don't even know what exchange is. This is photo bash and lots of paint over. That's why you for fur characters you need to have a good eyes. And I learned from the other artists. This project unfortunately got cancelled, but they let us show this NDS art stuff and the weather did amazing uh, animation on all of this. They were moving, fighting, brilliant, brilliant. But hey, it's entertainment industry. This is my first real-time VR project that they did it in downtown Los Angeles. They called uh, Chain, uh, no, uh, I guess, a Victorian Nightmare. It was based on classic Charles Dickens. And uh, the director, Justin, uh, he, he was working as a director at Blair Studio. He said, I want to do a scary version of Charles Dickens' uh, The uh, Christmas Carols. And uh, all those spirits and uh, needs to be very scary, but the same language. And uh, I need to feel that it looks like an oil painting. Uh, he was into the concept, very visionary art director, amazing. So I had fun, and Aaron let me do whatever I wanted to do. Uh, this is like 20% ZBrush, but the rest of the painting, hand painting, no photo bash. And I enjoy It's something that if I have a time, I will definitely do that. He told me, what if the uh, spirit of uh, present, like this one, uh, has two kids coming out of it. So I came up with the idea that you can show very static pose like this. You don't need to be superhero pose. But how can you make it look, uh, there's a movement in it. And if you zoom in inside it, there are ignorance and want those kids are rotating around the skin. I know I'm trying to give you a nightmare tonight. So um, I love horror and horror sci-fi. And yeah, Beksinski and Giger and all those amazing uh, artists inspired me a lot. And now I just got inspired by seeing Alex Office more. <laughs> yes, different spirits. And if you see, the heads are two heads. One is rotating this way, the other is looking up. I try to put as much as symbolism inside the character designs, if I can. Uh, it's important for me. And uh, obviously lighting and mood are very important. 
Besides, you know, I, mean, I mean, your st the first stage is obviously design and the sketching for yourself, coming up with the forms and shapes, whatever, mud box, Z brush, clay, better. <laughs> and then it's just like, how are you going to light it? That's why I am obsessed with the Lumen in Unreal these days, because lighting is there. I mean, it's amazing. It's a real time. I put things there, and it's just there. I don't need to fight with it. I mean, refraction, and the, if you get these caustics around here, and it's very important uh, to know the foundation, something good for students' artwork and making portfolio. Yeah, lighting is playing a huge part in my workflow. Um, this is Monsters and uh, I have, uh, the Love and Monsters. We work with the Weta. I work we long among the Weta a lot. This character and some of the characters that I have done, actually they build it in practical effects. I, I think this one was made for come and play, uh, they call it Larry for Jim Henson Studio. This was a rod operated radio control puppet, I guess. Um, don't get me wrong, if I mean practical effects, it's not like that. Um, the, uh, the deformation of the Candyman in a mirror. And uh, tomorrow, or it was a great project. I had really fun with these things, uh, but they took all of things and director liked it, but the studio wanted to change it, and they changed it. Actually, a friend of mine did the final creature, which is, looks great, better than mine. And uh, uh, yeah, these are, I did not put them in a scene, so the lightings come from the uh, environment artists and asset people, but I designed, uh, uh, Zero mesh model that fully, and this is poly paint in a quiche in an Unreal. Um, also, this one as well, poly paint, but it was very early on, like three years ago. Uh, so, uh, that's all about it. And also, the prey they recently released. This, is, this, is, this came to the uh, shop before pandemic, very new, they wanted to be slender. 200 years ago, it's scarier, and obviously uh, the design has already been done, and the original design is super great. Uh, so we just did a reversion of that, costuming it, maybe do a little bit of, even this thing ended up changing. Change is very common in a film, and this one is for, for it part to uh, the Pennywise, uh, I don't know, fortune cookie. <laughs> Men in Black. Prosthetic test, uh, another one, this is something that you do a lot uh, to show, and then now I know for the Last of Us and all of everything, you see fungus and the growth and mutation. And uh, again, high tea for Men in Black, the International. It was a show for Netflix. Some part of it are photo bash, some are paint, some are ZBrush. And uh, this one, uh, it was, uh, we work on the Valley of Ancient for Epic. It was the very, very first early uh, robot, but they changed the one that is now is cooler. Um, same, mouse guard. So I pause here, I go to personal digital, and I'm going to start to describe something. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, foundation is very important. It doesn't matter if you want to be like, a, let's say, a VFX artist, you want to be go completely to concept art, you want to do a modeler. The, you need to uh, have a good, great, profound grasp of foundation. Like, obviously, it starts from drawing, so you can introduce with the edges, shapes, values, uh, uh, forms, how to obviously viscom that everyone needs to take perspective anatomy and anatomy and perspective will never finish the best environment artists are sitting down they can do lay out the great perspective grid and i myself am um, more comfortable doing environment design on a paper actually i don't know why i just get lost over there but uh, perspective grid is here. The creature is the same, it's just you sit down, you draw, but you need to know the foundation in order to be able to bend those uh, routine and come up with something cool because obviously time and money are very important and you need to be fast in pre-production and concept art. I mean, the way that you do the formation or you work on a plate or 
ZBrush and all these things, you need to know the basics so you can just play around. You can just bending them and uh, we call it inventive anatomy or breaking anatomy. Uh, you need to know them so you can uh, just play around with that and uh, do what exactly you're doing because if you're gonna come up with different forms, sh there might, there should be some kind of reason behind it. Like you know the triceps, but if you wanna destroy it and do three triceps, uh, you, uh, if you know the foundation very well, then you, can, you have a room to play with it. And also study theory, colors, history of VFX, video games, uh, traditional art, whatever you can uh, find is definitely educational and you can develop it and it will be applied to your uh, art work, workflow. Um, what else I can add here? Um, I do remember that uh, for myself, I wanted to be 3D modeler and animator. But when I, it's very common. You go there, you start to do something, and then you figure out, okay, actually, I'm more fit for the other side of the fence. And even at the work, you're gonna understand, and you say, okay, these are the things that I love, and you need to do what you like and get information as much as you can from everyone that you can. For example, if you are a student at Noman, you have this beautiful network, and this network is very important. I mean, the guy who's sitting next to you might hire you in future. Who knows? The fact is, try to gasp knowledge. Just be observant. Just observe, a great observant. Just don't watch, analyze that and apply it to artwork. I mean, uh, if you, I'm, I'm, I keep saying and using the same terminology that I use in the design. It, it's the same for even production. Even if you're a texture artist, you, if you're a compositor, let's say you want to be a dynamics or Houdini effects artist, it's all the same. I mean, you're looking at the physics, you come up with the layout and you apply it to that. For design, it's the same. Maybe this shape of bottle is going to encourage you to come up with something cool, then you have to do it. Um, break it to the simple shapes and then apply it to the more complicated one. Always start simple, then build your layers on top of that. That's, what, that's how I started to do world building recently. Like, uh, as I said, three years ago, I started as a, I work at a short called Dive. Uh, I, I did a lot of architectural element underwater and I just figured I love doing these things. Maybe it's the room to do that. So now I'm doing it. But uh, as someone who has been dealing with more organic form, first it was very intimidating and challenging, but I started to dissect everything to simple shapes and plan it out. And just know what you are going to do in industry. There is a huge room for everything. Like, uh, if, if, you, if you play video games, it's just not, don't just play video games. And you want to work at a video game, understand how they do the game, uh, how did they c came up with this gameplay. I'm not that game guy, I cannot give you that uh, advice, but I can, for film, understand the film, history of visual effects, history of animation, get exposed to the uh, cameras, uh, try to study that. Uh, because in this business, something that I do in a professional work, I have like a notepad, I go to the meeting, these are the questions that I ask. How is this creature gonna end up? Is it going to be digital? Is it going to be half digital, half practical, men in a suit? You need to know these things in order to even design. And also, what is the environment? I know you're doing the creature or characters and you say, oh, I just care about characters, but characters and environments are codependent. Creatures and characters exist in one environment. You need to know the environment. You need to know the color palette. You look at the nature, all these uh, animals. If you see the patterns on them in the nature, there should be some linkage with that, with the environment and circumstantial situation physically. So I asked about the environment. What is the color palette that production designer is going to use? They said, I don't know. It's in the beginning. I don't know. It, it, this, this project might get canceled. So you just keep asking them, what kind of lens are you going to show this creature? I mean, is it going to be uh, like 50 millimeter lens or is it going to be, uh, what kind of shot is that? So storyboard terminology, what kind of shot? 
how are you going to shoot it? Is it like a wide angle shot? Is it going to, because it's different, the way that you show your characters is all about light and camera at the end. It's like a film. It's just, you show it, if you shoot that with 120 millimeter, it's different than showing it with 28 millimeter. Maybe as sometimes I say that people do full shot at a very shallow depth of field, so it looks like a miniature. So you need to know these things, uh, so because it's a huge character and you cannot do that depth of field. Camera, lighting, um, I cannot, it's, lighting is very important um, in order to give a mood to the, because uh, some, some clients really like to see uh, final results and everyone come to you as they say, hey, we want to do an iconic creature, and you hear that word a lot, it's funny. I so, said, oh, I can't do that. Every, but uh, what they need to get is just like try to understand how they look at that. And it's very difficult, I know, because you do a lot and they can't choose. I myself do like three designs and that's all I give it. And I said, please choose this. I know m my friends, coworkers do 10 different versions and they t keep telling students or in teaching them that you need to show variation. It's true. But it's just also the personal thing. Sometimes I'm easier to give like small amount, but I can choose and pick uh, between them. Uh, and sometimes you are also helping the cinematographer and production designer as a concept artist. It's back and forth, teamwork. You, sh you show them these things, very rough. They said, oh, okay, maybe something's happening here. And you keep telling them. And sometimes they don't know anything and you pitch the ideas. I mean, you go to the third session, it's just like you have already done three weeks of artwork keyframes, creatures, characters, and some environment, and you show them this and said, you know why, maybe I'm gonna come up with something like a uh, dead pilot uh, thing, but it shows the reminiscent of that creature. So you're pitching, or maybe uh, it's going to be in the water. How does that look? Uh, this is very important, and um, the other thing is the reveal. I get to do it a lot. Unfortunately, this is all I can show as an NDA stuff. There are so many. And like, these are all very rough from ZBrush. It's not even properly lit in KeyShot. But it did its job. It's just communicate the face. Because it was just like one phone call, and I had less than two hours to do a sculpt of these things based on the first one, A. Just, hey, what if it's going to be open? and we just show something under it. And the eyes need to be green. It's not my choice, they chose it. So, okay. So you need to be fast and know and paint over it. Uh, like these areas are mostly paint over. I just like to show these things. Because uh, behind the scenes and showing uh, how you do these things are very important. It's just people see the final image and say, oh, look cool, look great. But uh, this starts here. This, this, this sketch is just how is this thing works. You're communicating and problem solving. At the same time, you know how to quickly put it in a scene. Uh, do you always have to put things in a scene? Not necessarily. It's just like a task wise. Sometimes these things is enough. Sometimes you have to finish it uh, to the further more uh, uh, procedure. Sometimes this is what I do as like three sessions. That's what, that's it. But some people do like 10 different shots of that and like doing a movement and also the brand the place that you work in these things are important like because obviously you are under the specific brand you need to be dedicated to those type of uh, uh, maybe kind of art direction I would say that but uh, even in the personal sketches uh, for example, I do something like this, but I will end up with a creature in a ZBrush, and I know how it looks like in a real human body. So I can, it's, I always look at the human, animals, insects, or of course you can go to deep sea creatures and grab things from here and there, combine it to the kind of the Renaissance draftsmanship, use the brown school of Rembrandt lighting, and put it out there. That's it. And some of the old, very surreal uh, artwork that I did on a, a, and the medium I use is Prismacolor and uh, different fa Faber Castle. And I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, about the works. And uh, but 
Um, the other advice that I would like to give is just like, uh, again, try to learn as much as you can and use all the resources around you. Now, these days, with all these things online, uh, uh, there is no excuse not to learn. I mean, uh, I watched two Norman Workshop DVD like 40 times. <laughs> so, because I really wanted that. I wanted to get there. I wanted to end up working for a uh, big practical effects shop here. But when I got, obviously, it just started to change like uh, mid 90s. So I ended up doing, uh, I, I was always in like digital is future. So I was in university while I was thinking about these things. And uh, I was honest with myself uh, what I like, what I want to do. And uh, this is important. I know at the beginning of the school, uh, it doesn't make, sometimes it doesn't make sense because you are practicing, you are exposed to all these things that you don't, you can't choose. But you can ask the others and how to choose. And you can look out there and see which one do you enjoy. Do you want to do work for animation? Do you want to work for uh, visual effects studio? Do you want to work uh, for practical effects or video game studio? And even if you want to work for video game studio, research that in advance. What do they do? What kind of artworks and concept artworks or even production workflow they put out there? Is it more sculpted? Grounded. What, 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 is, what is it they do? What is their design language? Is it more stylized, realistic? You want to work for Naughty Dog? You want to work for the Riot? Just keep thinking, which one do you like to work with? For example, from early work, I wanted to work for Stan Winston. I ended up working for someone who worked for him. Or I, ended up, I wanted to work for Rick Baker, so I ended up working for someone who had worked for him. Uh, it, when I came to Los Angeles, I started to send my portfolio to all the studios uh, that I could show uh, this type of artwork, I mean, like close to this. Um, I didn't show these things to obviously Disney or Pixar, so this is very important uh, as your demo reel, because I was checking uh, Nomen curriculum, which is great, like you have two demo reel semester, which is obviously amazing. You have six months to build your things and get you to get there. But that's the important fact that you need to know what you're going to do and how you're going to connect all these things to make a sense out of it. And at the same time, you need to like it. Actually love it, not like it, because you need to get this a lot, so many times. I mean, how many creatures I have done in ZBrush? A library. And then uh, when, you, when you get burned out, burned out is a part of process, but how you can get over it is, is not for students, it's just like those who are already in a business, it's just like, that's what I do, uh, playing on with Unreal and a sketch. Maybe you just do different things, just, you have to break it, your routine, to get over that one or take a break. But, um, yeah, so, even uh, any specific uh, work, uh, studio that you want to work, study them see what they are doing and what they are famous for and try to show them uh, something that relates to the artworks that they do. Because you may get rejected easily and you take it personally. I did myself. I'm a victim of that. It's very common. But it's not that nothing is against you. You just need to be professional and move on. It's just like you're not a fit to that kind of artwork that they are doing. So then if you really want to be there, go to their event, speak with their supervisor, ask what they do, what kind of people they hire, consult with Nomen admission team or uh, placement, and uh, try to uh, get the insf insightful information, which will help you to get a job. And when I'm emphasizing on foundation, it's just when you, when you go to the work and daily work, you can see the difference between the artists who are coming from very grounded foundation art background or artists that their foundation is not yet there. But it's okay. When you get a job, you can teach each, teach each other. And some big studios have training for their uh, personal and uh, co-workers, uh, the workers, and you can improve. I am, again, I said, as much a student as every one of you out there. And I like to learn because when I'm learning, I feel this exhilarating moment that I'm uh, growing. 
And we all always learn. I mean, there are so many things to learn. Like, I keep saying Unreal Engine. Uh, I, by no means I know I'm an I'm, I'm expert on that. I just use it to my benefits, but I, um, very passionate to learn more every second and actually keep bothering people that how can I do this? How many, how can I bring something like this from Zebra, uh, this is the uh, 2D to ZBrush and then Unreal, but to my benefits. Uh, production guy needs, this thing needs to be very low poly and different, but uh, this, this thing might be uh, dynamic with holes in it. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I have to, uh, um, ask them the question about the workflow. Um, the, the other thing that I can add, and maybe I can talk a little bit actually about the content of the workshop It's uh, uh, that I did for Noman. Um, this is something that I had in my mind, like uh, the, in this workshop, um, I went through from the drawing board and uh, we, uh, we tested a lot, and uh, Norman Workshop team helped me a lot with that and had patience to coming, uh, patient to deal with my frustration with drawing it because I wanted to show that, and I did. But uh, I wrote this character, um, which was really important to me. It was based on the uh, uh, Iran and Persian mythology, and it's called Div which is kind of the demon, and uh, I'm not getting to the uh, background of the world, and I use Shahnameh, which is kind of the uh, big epic poet, and uh, came up with the idea. But when I was designing on a paper, I said, if someone asked me, I have to have a reason for all these parts of the body. And that's exactly what I have been doing, actually, in my career. Like, why is it like this? I mean, I, it has a belly, but I'm not a fan of putting six pack everywhere, but it needs to show fat um, and transformation and mood. And then this workshop starts with drawing very easy. I go to ZBrush. I started from something from the model in the ZBrush, which is already there. Show my s techniques. It's not, not very specific. I show some of the uh, techniques that is, might be a little bit strange and uh, that develop it, and I use a key shot um, because it's, um, I can sh come up with a very fast mood lighting. And after that, I came back to ZBrush when I liked what I was about to do um, because I, all of my full concept done in a key shot. Um, I, did, I prepped the model for in a ZBrush. I prepped it for Unreal, which is very easy. Zero mesh, UV master, U know it better than me, very simple, nothing complicated. Why? Because I was asked from some of the concept artists that, okay, you like Unreal, but can you give me and show me something that from ZBrush to Kish, I can solve this? Because as soon as you open Unreal, it's very uh, uh, somehow complicated to designers, and they just, oh, I'm not going to do that. Kishad is easier. But I did this workshop, and I just, how can I make it really easy, but, uh, do, work, do, do show a workflow that's workable. So I paint this fully in Zebra. I didn't use anything else. And brought all my maps and used the pre-made kind of uh, simple shading inside the, uh, the, the tree kind of, uh, they call it, I don't know, like a, sh a shader material because it's not like a key shot. You can drag a material or substance painter. Uh, you need to build some, connect some uh, shaders. And I just copy and paste them in the place that they are, and then I build the environment around it, which I really enjoyed, actually, for this one. And gave it lighting, atmosphere, uh, fog, heights, and the light is interacting with the atmosphere, like this spotlight that we have one here and there. It's, it's interacting with what's between them. And this is there. I didn't need to anything. I just need to art direct it and assemble it correctly. And I'm going to do that again more and more in my workflow. The only thing is just need, I have to find a better solution to pass this part and then we are there. And uh, it's somehow educational and uh, yeah, I start like a sketch from the Unreal. Mm, uh, 
for, you know, it just came to my mind, for this type of hard surface suit stuff, because I've done uh, like uh, suits or uh, make parts, this is all ZBrush, and it's funny, if you, I don't know if there is still, a, back then, if you study industrial design and engineering, you, you uh, uh, um, the hard clay, you can actually build it, and in ZBrush, you can use uh, so many brushes that it, you can actually sculpt. Uh, however, I think in ZBrush you are still drawing because you're drawing on a space. It's not real sculpting that you add balls of clay, but they call it digital sculpting. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of organic modeling, but with the language and the brush that hits the surface is trying to be uh, kind of a hard surface. And I did a lot of passes and a key shot and lots of paint over, and it's just all, for me, it's all about Photoshop at the end. Uh, just showing a, a little bit of range, like a costume, it's just not like a creature or like uh, the head is very organic, this part is, is a ZBrush and f photos perhaps and a lot of paints and showing a part of, because uh, I hear the term character design for film. Character design for film is actually costume design for film because characters are already being casted and they know what actor or actresses is going to be there. Uh, so when you say character design is more uh, tangible for animation maybe and video game, especially stylized. So th that's the other thing uh, to have in mind. So you you need to... Uh, no, some custom, not at all, but play with it because it's a concept con custom design. And um, there are so many qualified for that can talk about that one or more about creature. And uh, even the heart, that's funny, heart surface always look creaturey. Um, this is like a sketch and paint over, paint over, just paint over. And this is a kind of lighting that I tell you, just you can look at the paintings, traditional paintings, and apply it to your art scene and use them. It's an old hand-painted digital painting. Uh, sometimes I do. It's very, these things are very old. Um, and uh, just a scope, uh, ZBrush, a screen grab from ZBrush. And you would be surprised. Sometimes uh, clients, uh, they keep saying that have a problem reading the ZBrush, but I've done that. It worked like a Z, uh, we call it Z grab, just grab from Z screen, screenshot from ZBrush and send it to clients because I can easily paint over it. Yeah, I call it triangle of foundation, but not that foundation. It's called drawing, painting, clay modeling. Draw. You want to do it on your iPad? You do it on your iPad. Uh, I'm just recapping something for the, uh, choosing the track if you go into any school. If, if you, for example, you want to be a modeler and texture artist, uh, besides of all those amazing software that you get exposed to, obviously you need to play with the clay, you need to be, because when you sculpt the character in ZBrush, you need to have a good understanding in forms and anatomy to do a full character, and it's just not a naked character. You need to do all the parts, props, uh, costume, uh, maybe, not necessarily texture sometimes, the surface artists are, it depends on the studio, are different, they do the texture on top of yours. But the easy, the first thing you can do is it, just drawing. It doesn't need to be, if you, if you don't like traditional, do it traditionally, just do it on your iPad, just do it with the tablet, doesn't matter. Just play, draw, and uh, then paint, and get to know the color theory. Um, temperature of colors, all this foundation. I keep emphasize this for foundation, foundation, and foundation. And because when you do clay and put it under that light, you said, "What? How? Why does it look like that?" Well, if you do a lot of, let's say, pectoralis major, and then do it with the deltoid muscle, then you do it with the clay, and you're good at it. When you go to your creature, and you can by just brush and hit it there, you can bring the break your radialis, break the hand very fast. And if you can, I can draw this straight, but you need to know that muscles are wrapped around it. You don't need to know the names. You need to know the, uh, what is beneath it, how they work together. Uh, a, li a little bit of lesson on anatomy, draw fat. It's very important to see the gravity and how they move because when 
the hand is moving like that or the body is moving, you get different uh, forms. And that's pretty much it. And if we can go jump to the Q&A. Uh, actually, I, yeah. I had a few or, questions for you already, Asan, yeah, yeah. just kind of some setup stuff. You were talking about a little bit about your background. And you also had mentioned that putting a little bit of your personal, just your yourself into your art. By doing that, do you have any examples that you could show us? And because I know that a lot of artists, they tend to do that, right? You get connected with your art. Um, and doing that more personally, I think, is, you know, adding that personal touch. That can be difficult, obviously, if you're going to be, you know, doing stuff for film and TV. So how do you balance that? How do you add, like, this is still, this is still me, and then still creating something for the client? Yes, I, I do that. Um, sometimes I'm trying not to do that because uh, when you, uh, I love to do, I have to say I love to do that, put a bits of yourself because I'm coming from traditional art background and I, I was into to uh, be a gallery artist, honestly, and surreal figurative art, but at the same time I had a passion for film and entertainment. So when I even do these things, you see a touch of like, and maybe a touch of those words into some of them. Uh, but sometimes when I have a certain clients that I think and I have a feeling it might not be a good fit, I try to stay away from that. If I'm getting to your answer, I got your answer, uh, question perfectly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, if it's a blue sky, I definitely, uh, it's, it's a routine that I show actually, uh, show this type of stuff to my client, the sketches, and they say, yeah, it's good. Sometimes they don't even ask me to develop it and they are happy to do it in 2D. And I, I bring this in Photoshop and do a extensive color paint, 2D fully, no 3D, and just deliver that. Sometimes people ask you, can you do... The place that I work, uh, uh, obviously two different, it's one of them like ASC, they wanted to do ZBrush. It's just like a brand. ZBrush key shot, ZBrush key shot. So you do it. And I have no problem by doing that. Um, actually, I'm, I'm, but for freelance, I, you, I show these things. Even now, actually, I did it last week. I just show a set of this three or four, and I add my personal, the thing that you asked, like we, there's a term called esfomato, that like Leonardo da Vinci did, there's no parallel, that things are coming out of the fog. So I smudge, 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 so the creature is coming out, it gives the movement and the mood. With 2D, with very rough a sketch. And it communicates, it worked for me, it might not work for the others. And sometimes you show this and say, I don't understand this. Can you do better? And you do more fully finished. I mean, like, part of the leg is not even finished, but not being finished is different by being a slobby. It's just like, you communicate. And it worked for me. So far, I haven't had any problem, even at the uh, studio, at the shop. But, but yeah, that's to the and answer of your question. Yeah, it definitely did. The, the other thing is that you have an extremely large body of work, and you <laughs> it seems like, obviously, you work Thank pretty you. consistently. But every artist runs into a wall, right, where you wake up and you're like, not today. I just don't want to do it. And every person has a different way to overcome that hurdle. For you personally, what do you what do you do to find that inspiration when you just wake up and you're like, it happened to me a lot. It, to this day, every day, and every artist must be prepared for that. I'm trying to be blunt and honest. It's a workflow and path you use, you like, and you chose in your life. But there is a philosophy behind it. So. You need to be honest with yourself, and I, it goes back to the beginning of the lecture. You like it, or you really love this shit. If you love it, you keep coming up with the way around it. For example, I myself have my own routine. I have a library of books. I, I, I like the setup, like the physical setup that I am surrounded with. So I have the books. I keep buying, purchasing books. And my brother is always saying, if you want to move somewhere, where are you going to put this? There's so many books. <laughs> and I just keep going to the library. I like this old school touch. And I just saw the library, Norman Library, because I've been here like eight years ago. I had been here like seven or eight. I, there was no library. I went to the library here uh, 
it was inspiring. Like, I want to sit there. <laughs> like, honestly, I want to sit there and the sketch 24-7. Yeah, they do. They do. The students do do that a lot. Now, I mean, if I had something like that, what would <laughs> I, it's just like, that's why I, there's no excuse that you don't do what you want to do. I mean, I saw the library and I figured, because I have some something close to that, but very small in my apartment. Like, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a fanatic about collecting the skulls. Because in creature design, a friend of mine who's teaching a card, I told him, whenever you want to do a creature, go for the skull. Go for the skull. It, it became expression. Uh, because honestly, it's important. Because you do a medium uh, close-up shot, money shot, uh, bust, and you do a lot. And if you don't understand the skulls beneath it, your anatomy will fall. So it collapse. Why I do every morning that I wake up that I think, oh, no, the only thing you can ask my wife, she's here, uh, I draw and I read. I draw like this, but not, not finished, just, just a sketch. And I go to those books and look at the other artwork, books, behind the scenes, classic films, movies that I really inspire me. And that's my suggestion. You can do whatever. If, you, if playing a video game will help you, I'm, I don't play game, my wife plays game. I'm one of those that who play game, you will laugh. Yeah. I'm one of those grandpa who's stuck somewhere and just trying to get out. I'm not, I'm, I suck at it. Ever since Amiga 500, I suck at it. I just watched my little brother playing all the video, but I watched the demos, all of them. I just watched the demo of the video game. I enjoyed the art, cinematics, understand it, and keep moving. I don't play games, not at all, I confess, because I'm very bad at it. So then I, I, I do have a, another question specifically about your art. There is a, a mangaka artist by the name of Junji Ito, and he draws very horrific stuff. And obviously we have a stream called uh, Creature Corner, which is hosted by Jared Krzyzewski, who is like the nicest dude. Are your nightmares just like bubblegum and unicorns and rainbows? And then this stuff like makes you happy? Like, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it, it is. I mean, the other thing I, I'm going to add on top of that is just like when uh, back in shop, uh, place he work as well, uh, when they gave a tour to the audiences, they came up, obviously we had like second monitor and references, right? Because, oh, something I had to mention to the students, yes, we look at the references, you should look at the references, first nature, then artworks. That's my philosophy. And uh, anyway, but your second monitor is full of odd, strange <laughs> shapes and forms, man. Like, you have no idea. Like, you get paid to work on, um, no, I actually not almost, sometimes science fiction. So you, you, they, they ask you to do certain stuff that you're going to do a reference board, collage board, whatever, okay? But then they give a tour, so everyone's, like five people here, and all do creature, and all the second monitor are Burn victims, Whoa. medical study. Uh, you just imagine, what, 10 o'clock with the coffee, I have my double espresso here and I'm just looking at this deformed guy, okay? <laughs> and I'm not getting it, it's my second nature and it's just breaking my thing. I'm, I mean, these are drawing, but uh, we've, it, it, it's true, it's just like bubbles and bubbles, it's everywhere. I mean, because uh, you search like an insect something and you go there, you grab it, you put it there. Even for environment, like I gave the, like uh, it was one of the post uh, World War II conceptual uh, architectural design to, mat, to our matte painter. I brought that book and it was, it was very scary. It was worse than Beksinski tortured landscapes. And the reference board was sad. I mean, even if you just look at it, but it's entertainment industry. Yeah. It's a showbiz. Actually, if someone comes to your table and says, these things creeps the hell out of you, you have done your job. Because you have no idea. Directors come to you and say, I want to see something scary. It's not scary. Can you do something really mess up my brain? I, I don't have nightmare from this. What are you giving me? Just 10,000 10, tentacles? I don't want to see 10,000 tentacles. <laughs> Give something and the actually Two things are very difficult. Doing something very comic, comedy style, and something supernatural and scary. Like my friend did an amazing creature job for the Ritual film on Netflix show. 
it's, these things are very difficult because it's very subjective. Two different. Yeah. So then in that same vein, you were talking about anatomy, right? Studying anatomy, learning anatomy, and how important it is to know anatomy, and then in order to break it. Oh, okay. Some of the stuff, though, there's, there's no... In, in my mind, there's no reference for the breaking, right? Because it's, you're, you're, you still have to come up with some of it. Like, for instance, for Predator, right? There, there's not many things that exist that their mouth opens like that. And obviously, in some of your sketches, there's not many things that have giant eyeballs coming out of their chests. So in those situations, how does a study of anatomy help you with, with quote-unquote, breaking it? Because you're also, you're, yeah. when you're bending it, you're really exaggerating it as well. Well, um, the predator thing, uh, it, uh, it's good that you brought it up. When something has been done and it has, it's a pop culture, it's very famous, it's predator. And you just, it's just like you get tasked for Lord of the Rings and you need to do Barrog or Orcs. There are huge fans out there that they like the original design. It's, us concept artists always bring that to the clients. If you change it to the wrong direction, it will have a, a, like, um, a reverse effects, and always happens. Because when something is very successful, let's say Xenomorph 1979, Ridley Scott, Alien, from Giger's original. To this day, the best design, it always be. If you keep changing that, something that it deviates from there, usually I see fall. It will fall, okay? Predator, Actually, they were asked us not to do anything on that. They wanted to see the naked flesh and anatomy of this character for the first time because it's always beneath some kind of the net and armor or gauntlet, the, the original uh, iconic one that they did in 1987, which is amazing to this day. But they just wanted to say, I wanted to be like slender and a little bit like uh, head smaller and more elongated and scarier. For the fangs, you said, you just need to look at the insects. You will find that thing in the nature. Trust me, there are. That's a predator. But I had the luxury to do the body as well, full. But they changed it and they gave it to the other studio, Practical Effects Studio, and they just built things on top of that. But for breaking anatomy questions, I mean, if you know, uh, like, uh, the deltoid muscle, um, I have to use this Latin name, shoulder muscle, when you know the real ones very good, you can bend it. You can uh, break it, bend and break it. So you need to know the foundation first. I think it's even the same for environment. Like, you, let's say you want to do uh, landscape shot, which is very uh, kind of a luminism or plus tonalist type of painting. You go back and check out the landscape painting by American tonalist uh, landscape painters and try to bring the sci-fi nature and flavor to that. Okay, you need to know the basics so you can combine it together. To your question, the more you know about the foundation, the better you can break it. Foundation, foundation, foundation. Yeah. Oh yes, right. that, exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, human anatomy. I mean, those are crochet because if you just keep copying that verbatim. Everything looks like emaciated anatomy, eight, six pack, 12 pack, five million pack things that you'd see in ZBrush website, everything like that, and everything is there. But it is there. Just know it, forget it, break it, add skin and flesh. Um, the skin over the muscles, I used to say that people, has some kind of flow and personality. It's just like orchestra. You, you bend it, you play with it, even in your ZBrush, even in the clay or drawing, just that's a, the best way I can describe it. That's, that's great. You're, you're answering these questions phenomenally. Yeah. Uh, so then in that aspect, going from anatomy to hard surface, armor, oh. stuff like that, like with the mouse guard, what do you oh. do for preparation for that? Like what do you study? I mean, again, not not many helmets are made out of skulls of bats, right? <laughs> uh, the mouse guard, it, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he was responsible and lead on all those good mice, <laughs> call it good and or bad. Uh, I did this sculpt uh, from uh, kind of the model that they gave us, but it was very, very rough. And 
uh, and it was approved because um, obviously it's kind of anthropomorphism realm, right? Somehow. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a fan of this or it's anatomically correct because obviously some of the, like maybe, I'm not, I'm not going to get to the scientific part of that biologically. However, being a good creature design, you need to watch a lot of science and biology program like uh, planet, uh, uh, air planet, whatever nature shows are out there. But w I did this one first, it was approved and it was a really bad guy and we built on top of that. We looked at the m m mouses, and y you had a question how I came up with the armor or how I just Yeah, get and, the, and just the overall approach, right? Because uh, with anatomy, you can study anatomy, learn anatomy, sketch anatomy, work with that. But with the armor, what do you do for These things are just uh, the original comic book has this triangle shape that you see here. And the other concept parts, I can't remember, did something like that. And I had the huge references of medieval mm -hmm. and uh, armor and a lot of uh, knights and look at the European to, uh, from, like even from uh, uh, Islamic to all the crusades and look at all this stuff. But what was the design original for this thing, like coming up with all these skulls? I didn't show, I didn't have them here. I did a range of the small skulls from, for example, shrewd skull on top of that, bat skull, the sparrow skull. And uh, this guy, which was the bad guy, like this one, the head, this form language, uh, I just added some chain mail. How did they make chain mail? We didn't decide it back then. But costume designer who did the costume design for Apocalypto, she approved it and she says, it's, it's because we work very close with her. Uh, she says it's workable somehow. So I just put like a sparrow in for the shield. Uh, these parts are a scapula of the bat. <laughs> <laughs> well, go figure. <laughs> and yeah. it, it, it all goes back to drawing skulls, right? Yes. Yeah, skulls. because you need to have a layout for yourself before. Even if you have a, I have, like when you do 10 years of ZBrush professionally, by professional me working every day for studio or the other studio freelance, come on, you have like 10 different four trobytes ZBrush library. And if you get tasked to do something, you grab things from everywhere. And, but if you're a student, no, you need to start and at least experience from, experiment from the scratch. And I have this thing for students, especially modelers. You need to do one human, like one male, female, apes from scratch, a sphere or this, it doesn't matter. From scratch, so many references, especially modelers. Horse, um, canine, and one cat, any type of cat, doesn't matter. Again, ape, horse, human, do that from scratch. And because you will be surprised how much you will learn, even if it will take you, obviously, as a student, it might take you two months or three months to finish one fully type of gorilla silver back from a crochet, from a sketch, from everything. You build all those forms. And after that, you need to add muscles. Forget about fair now, you add muscles. On. Because for fair, I use, I paint fair. <laughs> I don't use, what's that? The Maya thing, X gen. No, I don't do it. Yeah. So, in, in that, same, and I think there are a lot of uh, students or people that have uh, had this a similar transition, right? Going from 2D to 3D. Just as far as difficulties and hurdles of, of going through that process, what do you think was essentially the, the most difficult for you, if, if anything? Like, did you have to change your mindset of how you thought about the, the, the programs that you were using versus having like a tactile pencil that's in your hand that you're using to sketch. I know you still do both. Oh, yeah. But learning the other mediums, well, how, how do you kind of like reconfigure your brain to kind of do that stuff? Now I don't know how I do it because I do it every day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I do uh, like sketch, ZBrush, um, fully 2D painting. Uh, I prefer 2D. If I, if, uh, because I have more fun and it's fast. ZBrush, I'm very fast at it now. I can do all of these things on ZBrush. And uh, I've been using ZBrush since uh, 2006, I guess, or seven. And uh, 
Um, uh, the fact is, uh, if you know, I mean, if, if you're asking about jumping from software to software, if you know one software, it's just a tool. You, you just like imagine you're shifting. For example, when I just opened Unreal, what helped me to get around, and it was just I was very familiar with Maya. Because it's Maya, was, Maya and XSI was, uh, were the face, first uh, programs that I was exposed to way back. I chose Softimage because, why? Because they, they had something called, uh, you could uh, uh, move topology kind of brush back then, so you could do something like you're doing move in a ZBrush. But Maya uh, to, uh, now is just like my main tool if I want to do kind of uh, environment and scene set and bring it to Unreal. But knowing that helped me to get there to Unreal. And shifting between these things that you said, like changing your hat, like from cinema uh, photographer hat to compositor or from 2D drawing to ZBrush, uh, it's just like it, it, it will become second nature after practice. I know I will have a little problem now if I want to go to, uh, let's say I want to do a stylized character, that's different. Uh, but um, it's just like practice and I have my own hurdles. Yeah. Okay, uh, so now if anyone here has a question, we can open it up and then we'll also open up to chat. I know chat uh, did just have a question about the green-eyed monster. So opening up the face for references like that, for things that you have to do along those lines, um, do you just go, it's going to open in the front, it's going to open in the back? How do you... Do you, how do you pitch that stuff? You mean reveal? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's very common. Unfortunately, I only have one example, but it's very common to yeah, do reveal in creature design and also special uh, um, prosthetic effects. Uh, if it's a ZBrush model, this, uh, if I explain it now, it's more technical and with dynamic and there's no limit. You can just duplicate your model and re-sculpt it and repaint it, but Obviously, 2D, I guess, is faster. You can open it or close it. But that's what, when you are in a meeting, you're going to ask this question. For example, if they say uh, uh, this creature is kind of a creature, it, it, because sometimes they write something. It's called creature brief. They give you a brief and a script. So you read it, or you say, oh, okay, in act two, in that part, in that session, it's just like, that page, this thing is going to open up. Even if it's a tentacle or part of it, or like the movie Mimic, it's very old, but if something opens, uh, then you know, okay, that's gonna happen. So you plan in advance to do it. But I do it on a paper first to understand the logic and also uh, the how I can come up with the solution to open it and close it. Because usually you need to be able to close it as well. Okay, cool. Uh, also, what is, how do you get your inspiration for your color palette? Very good question. Traditional painting and also nature. Two things, different. Photography, I mean, with my iPhone. I just go out there, I take photos from every, from even, even from this set. I mean, look at those red light and that green thing. I was just looking at it and it just reminded me of one shot in Aliens 1986, that, that red shot. <laughs> Sorry, fanatic about <laughs> films. Yeah, it's just like everything, it just can come up with, it depends on what you're going to do, so you can come up with a color palette. Or if it's very certain, you can go to the painters, that's what the directors and cinematographer actually they use. They ask, uh, that's my palette, so it's just like, what, what is your palette? And production designer and cinematographer always work together to come up with a palette for the scene. Uh, and also you need to ask about the mood, because it's different. The way that you pick up the light, light is in a, a, uh, the color or uh, relative subjects, so it's reacting to the light. So you need to do that. What I do that, just take a look at my photos, and I even iPhone, or look at the oil painting, or even artwork, whatever, or film. So I came up with the palette. Sometimes you, you're given a palette that the creature is, uh, um, for example, this one, that was, which was a real VR experience. Uh, 
the director told me this one is going to be sepia brownish, uh, burn umber type. As far as I can remember, the spirit of future is going to be blue thing, uh, dark bluish thing, and the spirit of the future, dark blue. Uh, sorry, blue, and uh, this one is going to be like moody. Awesome. So, uh, what insect have you studied that made you squirm? Sorry, can you repeat that again? What, what insect have you studied that made you squirm, that made you uncomfortable? Like, have you, I, I, obviously we talked about, like, the, the books uh, that you've read. But like, roaches. Roaches. I'm not, just, the only one is just, just roaches. The, the rest is good. I, I, can, I can get along with them. What is it, so what is it about roaches? Ah. Uh, I looked at the artworks of the ILM creature guy who worked for the Mimic Guillermo del Toro's artwork back then, and it was a little bit uncomfortable, that's it. But as a creature guy, you need to, ah, as an artist, you need to get along with these things. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, <laughs> you know, you, you work a lot, but how do you also find time for your personal work? Oh. Good one that you just remind me of something that you, I have to say to taking care of your life. Um, it's uh, it's uh, about balance, uh, rhythm. You, need, you have to do that. It's not need. You have to. Uh, how do I do that? I just force myself. It's just like working out. I, um, I have a clock. Like every day, 30 minutes, I have to do workout. But pandemic helped us to do workout every day, like every day <laughs> at your room. But... Yeah, uh, I, I take care of my body to some certain just be healthy. Just, just keep the blood flowing. And something that I have to give advice, it, I'm, I'm very honest with this. Take care of your body. I mean, if a student is just spending all the time here, I, um, I myself have a standing uh, set up because of the lower back pain. So your posture is very important. Take care of your body. Do um, exercise, go out, hiking, I don't know, running, swimming, whatever, doesn't matter. Just some physical activities are very important. Not sitting behind a computer 24-7 and just like that. Maybe I, ha I could do it very bad, but not, not anymore at the age of 41. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's actually really surprising because a lot of uh, artists that we have here, they say exactly that. Taking care of your body actually really helps you yeah, yeah. throughout if, the If you're life. a Norman student, there's a gym here. Uh, so you can... <laughs> go to that gym, come here, and take care of that, both. And go to that, my favorite spot that I just found in the Nomen. I'm unfortunately far, uh, otherwise I would register for that library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be there. So then I guess uh, the only other question is, uh, if we wanted to learn some, some stuff from you specifically, if there was some kind of, I don't know, maybe like a workshop or something that we could check out. Um, currently, I am. The, there are two classes that I'm go running at the uh, Brainstorm School of Concept Design. It's online classes. Uh, maybe uh, I don't know. In future, I come to Norman, <laughs> or uh, I'm, th I'm talking about with the other uh, schools in Los Angeles area to do a contract to teach uh, probably the next fall and summer. Yeah, and it's going to be mostly about. Uh, conceptual creature work and also um, putting the creature in the scene. It's very important. It's very important. It's just like if you can do all of them together. But uh, the only class that I have online now is uh, besides of the Nomen workshop, the yeah, that's, that's, workshop. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. It's right there. That, that awesome Nomen oh. workshop that you got going on right yeah. there. Yeah. Well, it's, the, it's, the, it's uh, you need to subscribe uh, and the other, uh, the active one is just the online one that I told you. Yeah. 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 And I think for this right now, the Nomen Workshop, there's a discount code too. So it's the perfect time to check out Absolutely. this exact Nomen Workshop. Yes. Let's go to the Nomen Workshop. Hello, everyone. My name is Ehsan Beglu. I'm a senior concept artist and visual IP developer in the entertainment industry. Thanks for watching this workshop. This workshop is called Making of Ahua Deev. This is a personal project that is revolving around an evil bipedal loop demon which has been gone through a lot of metamorphism over millennia and known to use his dark power to capture human essence and beliefs. 
and use religion to torture them. This demon is against the joyfulness and literally anything human. Coming from the word Dibes, which is Zoroastrian supernatural entity with evil characteristic gods that are descended or refused. I used and studied the ancient Persian mythology through the masterpiece epic poem book called Shahnameh, written by 10th century master poet and author Ferdowsi as my few references. In this workshop, I'm going to show you how I will start by generating my idea and drawing the character on a paper based on the brief story, mythological and allegorical story behind the character and always have in my mind the symbolism. This will go through the ZBrush to enhance the design in three-dimensional format and use Keisha to do quick mood lighting and bring the essence of character out. Finally, after the Keisha step, I will use Photoshop for comping and professional presentation. On my daily professional design work, either creature or character, I'm almost a start by sketching and love doing it on a traditional medium and transfer it to the CG, which is great. Sometimes it will suffice that I stay on a paper based on the client's and art director needs. I am confident to do so an entire design on a paper, but I like to explore. Also, at the end, there will be a bonus chapter to see the character in kind of the lighting set and the scene, which I won't spoil it now. Thanks again, and I hope you will enjoy it. Question about it? I'm sorry. Is there any question? Yeah, I was gonna okay. say we're gonna we were we were gonna uh, actually. I'll, I'll, go is this the best example that I can show? I mean, like this part is like digital, but this thing is funny. It's uh, ZBrush has something uh, <laughs> way back called fog, and it uh, I use this as giving the depth to the model. And it's, it's very old, like in 2006 and 7, it was very popular. And I showed it to the other guys in, uh, at ASC. I said, what did you do? And so, because it was just a screen grab from uh, ZBrush, that this one. All the others are uh, key shot. And it gives the mood, it's coming out. And if you saw some of my sketches that I have done, it's the same method. So that's why I use this thing that no one is using it. And no one knows even there is a fog in ZBrush because it doesn't make sense, it's not even accurate. But I use it just because for my artwork, it's mostly about the mood and doing idea. So I just wanted to just point it out there. Uh, that's in something. Well, <laughs> and, and that also goes back to what you said earlier of that concept of like coming out of the fog or, or something along those lines you had mentioned, right? Yeah, that's exactly a sfumata term that I mentioned. Yeah, so cool. I just saw it here. I you know, missed that part. This is completely ZBrush. It's just obviously some filter in Photoshop, but the rest all variation of the mask of that demon. And uh, I wrote this character, and even in this workshop, I showed the script because I want to show the students or anyone who's watching Norman Workshop Library that what is Creature Brief is, what Creature Brief is, and it's just like showing, this is bipedal, this is based on uh, Persian mythology, this book, so you do your research based on what you are given. It's just very important. You do your research. It's the, doing your research is the first important step even before sketching. And I know some clients even, uh, some uh, artists charge their clients based on the gathering references also. So it's important to grab all these things and know what's behind it. But in this case, I was making this thing up for myself. So I wrote everything for it. I just keep writing uh, the character and I made it from scratch and for the workshop. It's a full, like a real daily base, but it's just very, it's in one workshop. It's just like all my years of experience just put it in one workshop. Yeah. That's awesome. So, do I have to leave it on this or I can? You could, yeah, you can put yeah. it back. <laughs> so, what is your favorite creature from film or mythology? Hmm. Actually, let's do one of each. What's your favorite creature from film? What's your favorite creature my, oh, from my mythology? Film. Xenomorph. Z oh, Xenomorph, number Always. one. Always. Xenomorph. Top of Hands the Hands down. The, the whole thing. I've been to H.R. Giger Museum 
the, the actual museum and last time it was with my wife two times, two different times in Switzerland. And I went to his bar again because I'm a Giger's fanatic. I studied him, not copying him, studied him. And I had a chance to meet him in 2009 back in Zurich, but it didn't work out. So yeah, definitely creature, the first one, Xenomorph. And the best creature film, again, Alien and The Thing. 1982, The Thing, hands down. Nice. I mean, the amount of the work that they did with practical effects. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about in mythology? Do you have any favorite? Oh, I love mythology. Oh, there are so many. Like, uh, even in the country that I'm coming from, from Iran, so there are so many that I'm obsessed with. So I'm ex inspired by all. All the mythology from any part of this world is inspiring to me. It's very beautiful. And in uh, mythol mythological creatures, you have uh, a more wide range of emotion that you can do whatever. I mean, because sometimes there is no physics behind it. It's mythology. A lot of times. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of times. Fantastic. So if uh, anybody online wanted to keep up to date with you and what you're doing, where, where would they go? Obviously, we see right here. Yeah. It's on bigblue.com. Yeah, it's my website, and uh, it's the, my personal website. You can reach, find me here. And for social media, I am only on LinkedIn. I'm active there. So far, it's worked for me. It's very professional, a little bit different from the other social media platform. And I, I like LinkedIn. It's, it's relaxed. Yeah. Uh, that's the, uh, the only place I am active is LinkedIn. I don't have, uh, like, Instagram or... I used to have Facebook, but it didn't work out. <laughs> well, thank you so much for Absolutely. coming out. We really appreciate you. If anybody on our streams wants to see any other great streams coming up, make sure to follow us on social media. Again, Your Nomen Workshop has a great discount code associated with it right now, so you can check that out as well. And we'll see you all next time. Thank you so much.